So hello, I am filling in for Madalena and Rosanna this week. Um, this is a weekly sumo meeting, so let's get started. Oh, I should uh, put in the etherpad in pound sumo if anyone is following along. I don't see anyone else connected to the call, but um, let's see. Anyway, all right. Tyler and Roland to blog about sentiment report sentiment report for Android. Done on Wednesday. It was done yeah. this past Wednesday? No, that'll be done this Wednesday. Oh, gotcha. It's all written. Um, we're just waiting to finish announcing and getting feedback within the org before we announce that publicly. Yeah. Okay. Yay, Tyler. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Michael to tell us about the Open Help Conference. Oh. Yes. Crap. And now I don't have my notes in front of me. Okay, what did I want to tell you about the Open Help Conference? There was a couple of things um, that were interesting or um, some of them, like this first one, were things that we already knew, but it was good to hear again, like forums are terrible for doing support. That was everybody's big yeah, thing. They were like, we hate forums for support. Um, it's terrible to try to have a conversation. The answer's on page 32. Um, old stuff keeps coming up in Google. Question and answer things, so much better. So, like the guys from uh, Canonical did a whole presentation about um, whatever, the Stack Exchange that they use for, you know, like a question and answer type thing, and they talked about that. I talked about how our forum was inspired by that idea it has it's you know different features but but the general idea of a question highlight this is the answer so you see them both right up at the top instead of you know um <clears throat> what else um oh <clears throat> one thing that people uh, kind of in general this was a general thing of discussion like at lunch and and everything was like the everyone saw as a blocker in open source projects this like reluctance to overwrite or delete things that people have written um, that is a is a blocker to, to cleaning up and and um, making documents up to date because people have spent a lot of time writing something um, we don't want to just you know get rid of it or archive it or move it away like so Everyone saw this need to reorganize and keep things up to date and prune old content. And the issue always in the way was like, you know, somebody worked for hours on that. So trying to balance those, those two things. But going, what we really have to do is put our users ahead of people worked on this, yes, but what's more important for users? And that's a, a sometimes hard it's hard. That's a hard uh, internal conflict, you know. Um, uh, some interesting things I saw also, like, um, so Wikipedia or Wikimedia, the organization behind it, has, um, they have this granting program. They, they give uh, people money to try cool projects. And one that they highlighted was this one called Treehouse. I'm sorry, not Treehouse, Tea House. Um, Tea House. Um, and it, it's similar in a lot of ways um, to our buddy program and technical writing program. It's kind of like a buddy technical writing program. So it's for it's to encourage um, and find new writers for for Wikipedia articles. And so they go out and they look for people who um, they think have some promise, and they invite them to the tea house, and they have hosts people who are more experienced and then the new people that they invite are the guests and even though they have they have documentation on how to write they also recognize like that documentation has like sometimes gets really bloated and they have the same problem about getting rid of stuff or combining things um, so there's like way too many articles on like citing your uh, um, Citation, doing the citations for an article, for instance, is like overwhelming amount of documentation on that. 
So one of the things that they really stress is people being able to ask questions about anything. And rather than just saying, hey, go read the docs, here's the uh, link to that. Um, you know, it's about taking time to actually answer people's questions and have a dialogue with them. And so there's profiles for people so that they're, you know, it's about being actual real humans and not just like, uh, you know, an IRC nickname and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they've been really successful uh, with, with that um, um, over, you know, just having people register and go right kind of thing. Um, those were the big things, uh, I think. Um, one other thing, I don't know if this applies to our forum, uh, our, our, you know, questions app, but um, one of the things that in, the, in a Stack Exchange thing that uh, they help, that they do to help um, ratings of answers and how things show up, uh, like in search results and stuff, is of course v voting on good answers. But as part of like um, moderating or using the forum from a helper point of view, they um, spend time voting up good answers instead of just the, you know, question owner or the people trying to get help in that thread. Um, uh, moderators and people also vote up good answers. Um, uh, I don't know if that would help us in any way. I don't know that we normally do that. I don't go around if I read a good answer. I don't normally mark that helpful because I'm always thinking, was that helpful? To I'm just reading somebody else's question, not um, thinking about did that help me? You know. Yeah. I don't know if that would yeah, help I... help us in terms of like related questions, rankings, and stuff like that. But so I thought I'd bring that up. Right. That's pretty much it. Um, it uh, those are the big. I guess those are the kind of the highlights. So, Michael, we should put that on as a discussion item for the uh, platform meeting this week. Okay. I mean, it's an interesting idea. Like, I, I feel like it kind of skews the results a little bit because we're we're putting our own kind of uh, you know contextual thoughts around or on the votes. But right. Um, it may be worth investigating. Like, maybe we can do it for a week and see if we uh, get better click through. Okay. Well, I must confess that I do it if it's really obvious that the answer is super helpful. I Sorry, I click on it. This is helpful to me. Roland, you're, you're just a rebel. <laughs> Typically, well, it's, uh, and I try to only do it with uh, volunteers. I don't do it with staff uh, responses. What were you saying? Maybe that's wrong. I was saying our moderators are doing something similar. Uh, they correct things. So when something is uh, mistakenly marked as uh, solving an issue, then they correct that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that we intentionally, that anyone intentionally, uh, maybe aside from, from Roland, but I don't know about others. I don't do that. Um, I don't think we intentionally upload things. Um, for me personally, it's always hard because sometimes the, the question is, or m more often the question is not that obvious. So then if you don't have the issue, you don't know what the correct But not always. Cool. Um, anything else? Any questions? Okay. So we should uh, move on to Sumo development update. I don't know if Ricky's on the call. I don't know if Kadir, you're. Have you, have you caught up in the last uh, couple of hours? <laughs> on everything well, I spent going on? eight hours reading over six hundred emails, but I haven't caught up on development uh, yet. So all I can say is there is a current sprint, the 13th sprint. Um, we are going to talk about that tomorrow and finalize that tomorrow uh, in the sprint planning meeting. Um, but aside from that, I actually don't have an update. Uh, actually, Ebay, you might. Do you want to say anything about some of the things? Just uh, an update. Yeah. I mean, we said some of these things last week and in the platform meeting, but there's the meeting, yeah. Yeah, still a bunch of stuff that's kind of ongoing. Yeah, I mean, we, we're supposed to land, land the, 
the UI changes on the topic pages and subtopic pages this week. Uh, that was something that uh, fell through the cracks last week. And um, once it's done, we'll, we'll announce it, we'll test it and we'll ship it. And yeah, I think that that's the most important thing for the navigation and the topic subtopic structure. Just if somebody wants to take a look to the platform meeting, we have all the notes there. Long story short, it shouldn't affect much to end users. Uh, contributors will start to see these on the admin panel, those who have access to uh, admin privileges. I saw that we have uh, new product icons. They look really nice. Oh, yeah, sorry about it. Yes. Uh, I was working with a creative team just to find something a little bit more descriptive and I upload them on Friday. Uh, if somebody has a strong opposition to them, please let me, Michelle, uh, Roland know, because we were the ones saying they look awesome, we should ship them. Oh, anything's better than three icons that look identical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the thing is that they, they I, I totally forgot about that. I was, I have, I told them with a beer. Writing. Put a link here, yeah. I guess. I think yes. we should probably, uh, I, I the, think the, they look great, especially the new Firefox OS one, but I would, uh, I think it would be a good idea to test them maybe uh, to see uh, if, because it looks so awesome, people are clicking more through to, to that one. I don't know though, maybe mm. not. But we, we have optimized, we can test the, that stuff, that's cool. But that's the kind of thing, that's a good point. That's the kind of thing, though, that I think about is, um, I mean, you might be able to test, are people clicking more because, hey, look at that cool fox on that one or something, you know? What's behind there? Is that necessarily a bad thing? Is that like, yeah. you know, just... What, what, what do you that, want to test? That's interesting. I should go see what that's about. Well, essentially, if you have, this, yeah, if you have the same users um, and you have two different sets of icons, and if all of a sudden one of them gets a lot more visits, then you, we can look into why that might be and whether that's the right thing that we, whether we want that actually. So right now there shouldn't actually be a lot of Firefox OS users, but if the icon makes that spike, then it means that a lot of normal Firefox users are going into the wrong product. Or people are curious are about it. Curious and want to know what that is. Yeah, so it's, I mean, I think that you could argue different ways sure so I, yeah you would have to what we would have to do survey people to find out why they clicked it that's another possibility that would be interesting so i think that what's gonna be the best thing here is is to we're gonna ship it on the ask a question flow and if we reduce the amount of mislabel or miscategorized topics or uh, threads in the forum, that's a good symptom. Then people just recognize them properly and, and that we're doing the, the right job by just differentiating the products more than the support side. Because, yeah. A lot of people in support.mozilla.org are just exploring and it's people coming from from a specific product, they come to the landing page of that product. Right. So I think that spending too many cycles here, it's not necessarily uh, the best investment of our time. We could test the, the, the different shades of blue of the side, like some other company, uh, <laughs> but that's not necessarily a, a good idea. So many things to, to be focusing on. I agree. <laughs> For where it's worth. Cool. Okay. Anything else about development or UX? Okay. Um, there's nothing listed under the round table, but I thought I'd bring it up in case someone wants to add something right now. Going once, twice. David's thinking. Yes. Yeah. No. I, hello, Hermina. But I know that you guys covered that last week, so that's. I, I just wanted to say hi. This is the first meeting that we have, uh, when I'm here at least. So, just wanted to recognize hi. it. But that's it. No discussion. 
<laughs> All right. Um, Firefox desktop. All right. All right. Uh, so 22 lands tomorrow, and it's uh, pretty light on user-facing features, but I did link to the uh, release notes there. So a couple of cool things that are landing tomorrow. So we've got um, the display scaling options to render text uh, on larger high-res displays, shows, which is going to be pretty cool. And then I think the really, really cool one is uh, Odin Monkey lands tomorrow. So that's the uh, successor to uh, uh, Jaeger, Jaeger Monkey and... Monkey. And what was the other one? Ion Monkey. Jaeger Ion Monkey. Monkey. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, pretty awesome performance <laughs> improvements, but probably not something that we're going to get a lot of questions about. Um, we will be putting a post in the forum so that everybody can uh, check out any outstanding issues, but we're expecting this to be another pretty smooth release. Uh, the other big thing is, as we talked about earlier, we've got sentiment reports. So uh, post-mortem for 21. Uh, we'll let you know everything that people were talking about, um, how it compares to previous releases, and you know, hopefully what we can do better in future releases. Cool. Any questions? Awesome work on the sentiment report. Yep. All right. Um, Android. Um, yes. 22 comes out tomorrow. I believe uh, well, I don't believe. We are, have official support for x86, I believe. <laughs> 90%. Sometimes there's a little bit of a back and forth, but uh, that's a big thing. And uh, coming in 23 beta is the Firefox help report for Android, which I've written an article in English, um, which is sort of outside our normal awesome Michael Verdi process, uh, because engineering and a feat of daring do slipped in at the last minute. And so um, I will have an article in English, and which we will, um, which will be available for tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, I had to write it because it would be impossible for a non-staff member to follow the SAGA Firefox Health Report. My apologies to the researchers who watch this video. Um, yeah, yeah, and then we're going to write an article, a, a localized that article as part of the normal Michael Verdi, I mean Sumo KB Kitsune process. Uh, and that's it. It's Firefox 22 and then Intel doesn't have much. Uh, do you want to keep going with Firefox OS and Thunderbird? Oh, I don't know anything about Firefox OS. Oh, I have my key on phone. I have been using it. It's quite nice. It feels light like air. Yeah. And I can use the Twitter app, which is the only app I ever used on iOS and Android. Uh, I still have my Android phone. So I have two SIM cards. Key on is rocking. I like it. It's light. It works great. I don't know anything else about Firefox OS. Ralph? I do. I do have an update on Firefox OS. Actually, it's um, right. about 14 new articles that were finished last week and sent for localization, which is great because we are almost hitting our self-imposed target of 50 articles ready to start for uh, uh, with. Um, and I also I have been CC to some emails, uh, and uh, I speak for Rosanna now. She wanted to to thank the, um, the Polish, uh, Brazilian, and Spanish communities that are being great and are helping us a lot with localizing all the articles. So you're rocking, guys. Thank you very much. Very that's, cool. uh, that's it from, from me for last week. All right. Anything to add? You want to do Thunderbird? Yeah. Um, I know it's no surprise to all of you on this call, but antivirus is causing issues with Thunderbird. We believe it's a Norton 360 problem, and uh, Matt Harris, a super awesome contributor from Australia, and I are working on it. Cool. Um, we lost our metrics link. There's the metrics dashboard link. Uh, I haven't looked at it uh, this morning. Anybody else have looked at the metrics dashboard? Want to talk about that? Questions? Nope. It's taking, I have not looked at it. It's taking uh, forever to load right now for me. Yeah, I can't load it. I think there are some issues. I saw some unplanned outage around email, so this might be related. Oh, it's slowly. I have a page, no graphs yet. Uh, okay. I'll say just table this for we'll now. We'll table it for now. Uh, community updates and localization. Um, other than what Hermina just said, I know um, 
and this is part of the knowledge base update, but we are finishing up research this week, and then we'll start writing articles. So um, we're still at, we're in that period right now where we're working on the next release and and uh, getting things ready to localize for 23. So which is still like two more weeks away before we're ready to start localizing. But anybody else have anything to add about localization or community? Okay. Yeah. Knowledge base, I just said it. <laughs> support, <laughs> support forum. Uh, uh, Ebay, is there anything to say about, I know Madalena was working on rearranging or cleaning things up or in the, we have like a zillion uh, forums. Some of them maybe are not being used. Yeah, I mean, Maralina was thinking about removing some of the so the sub forums in the community and the contributors forum, and I think that there was she will add one or two. Uh, I don't know to be honest if she has added a thread to the forum, and that's my fault. Uh, but basically, there are these forums that are not really used. The Firefox Aurora for desktop and mobile that have literally two, three threads each. Uh, so, so you're thinking about removing them. If somebody has a good argument to keep them, you just reach out to Madalena. But I think that it's the right idea just to clean that list. OK. Um, contributors of the week. I see, I don't know who wrote this, a nomination for Tom and Andrew. For their uh, something about the Good mobile meeting. meeting. Good meeting. <laughs> Is that? I thought I thought you got stuck, so I thought I thought it would help you. Finished. <laughs> uh, well, I'd like to apologize for that meeting because my recording was totally audio free, but uh, <laughs> it was a good meeting, and the notes were good in text. Uh, so I don't know about that. Does anybody else have more information, or or what are we? What? You know, I honestly don't recall. Maybe we can get Michelle to look at it on Thursday, and or get sat down where we put this in to add some more details. Okay. That brings us to the bottom of the list: actions and decisions. Do we have any? I think you probably want to have a continued discussion uh, in the platform meeting about this, the the takeaways that you walked us through. I, yeah. I, I sense that there was something that we should continue to discuss. The thing about the the voting. Yeah. Thing. Okay. Uh, I will write that down after this because I can't talk and write. I mean, it's up to you, but it, it just sounded to me like you you guys were saying that yeah, yeah. we should probably you know we can. I wrote that down here. I'll write that on here. Oh. And and then I, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, I was going to add that it's probably an action item to clarify the contributor of the week because, uh, you know, I want to celebrate these guys, but I don't, we don't know. No one knows what they did. So <laughs> we need one more context. One yeah, tidbit exactly. context. Exactly. That'll be good. OK. okay. Um, and then, who's the unicorn this week? The unicorn? Yeah. The person who's going to tell us a story or show us show and tell. What was the deal? David was the last unicorn, so I think he picks the next one. What's that? I said you were the last unicorn, so I think uh, you get to pick the next one. Oh, does that? Does the anyone week remember I my unicorn thing? I must have missed that week. That was the one I was at. Yeah, so who can who can tell Michael what unicorn thing I did? It wasn't here either. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, the thing is actually no one can no one could tell that because I have but thanks Patrick, I appreciate that you're covering my ass, but or but uh, maybe <laughs> yours maybe you haven't done yours yet? No, I actually haven't done it yet. But uh, but if if anyone else wants to do it, you know I'm happy to to give my unicorn away this week. 
Otherwise, I'll just share it. So I don't, I don't have, I don't have a story to tell. I could tell a story, but it would be kind of boring. I'm not really a storyteller like Michael, but I, I do have a picture to show, and uh, this is kind of weird way of announcing it, I guess. But I'll just do it. <coughs> and can you see that? Whoa! That's awesome. Congratulations! Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Kudos! Baby tensor. Excellent. Wow. Congratulations, uh, David. And th this thing is is two hours uh, I, old. I, I stepped away at like <laughs> at four thirty today to with my wife, of course, to do the ultrasound. So this is not my stomach; it's my my wife's. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's an important distinction. I was gonna say Swedish it is a very important back. distinction. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, so. Okay, Thank you. It, yeah, it's, I mean, it's very exciting. It's all, it's, it's all kind of still weird, but I figured that would be a good show and tell given that it's just two hours fresh. <laughs> so, wow. so now you know. It's uh, planned in November 20th, 20th, so there's still plenty of time. Very cool. Before I, I'll duck away for a couple of weeks at least. Oh wow! Okay. All right, no one's gonna beat that, so we should end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if we had a puppy next week. No one's gonna puppy. Does, does puppy beat baby? I don't think it does. <laughs> it could. It well, could. Okay, maybe for five seconds, babies Pens. win for years. I've, I've always been more of an animal person than a baby person, so for me, this is gonna change my perspective of life. Yeah. But I'm sure it will be for the right reasons, in the right direction. All right. Well, I guess that's it. 32 minutes. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a great week. Bye.